This is our lab video assignment for MAE 352. In this lab, we analyzed the flow through a converging nozzle and a converging diverging nozzle. Our lab group members were RJ Gritter, Colin Bolton, Lindsay Reed, and Marcel Novak. The experimental setup consisted of an air tank pressurized to about 120 psi feeding into the test nozzle. A valve on the downstream side of the nozzle controlled the back pressure and fed into a rotometer used to measure the flow rate through the nozzle. The test nozzle included thermocouples to measure the temperature and pressure taps connected to a pressure transducer unit to measure various pressures. A PC running LabVIEW VI recorded the data from these devices. The purpose of this part of the lab was to observe the effects of back pressure on the flow of a converging nozzle and to observe choked flow. The cross-sectional area of a converging nozzle decreases along its length. The pressure at the exit of the nozzle is known as back pressure. The back pressure determines the flow in the nozzle. When the stagnation pressure equals back pressure, there is no flow in the nozzle. High back pressure results in subsonic flow. As the back pressure is reduced, the Mach number at the exit increases. Eventually, the back pressure is reduced until the flow is choked, meaning it reaches Mach 1. In this experiment, we created a pressure-driven flow using a compressed air source. A valve controlled the back pressure and mass flow rate. The stagnation pressure and temperature were measured using a keel probe, and the mass flow rate was measured using a rotometer. The pressure and temperature measurements were taken at the numbered locations in the figure. The locations along the top of the diagram are the temperature taps, and those on the bottom are the pressure taps. The above plot shows P over P0 plotted versus the distance along the nozzle. The two operating regimes are shown as the flow pattern changes at various back pressures. The top equation was rearranged to solve for Mach from P0 and P at each station in the nozzle. This Mach was co-plotted with the pressure ratio to show the Mach change along the nozzle. When the back pressure is equal to the total pressure, there is almost no flow and the Mach numbers are low. The next few graphs represent subsonic flow as they start approaching choked flow. As the cross-sectional area decreases, the flow accelerates and the pressure drops. When the back pressure reached 90 psi, the flow was choked. At this point, the pressure drop does not accelerate the flow. As back pressure decreases further, the flow remains choked and expands after the nozzle exit. This is no longer considered to be isentropic flow. As predicted, in the choked flow condition, the Mach values have not changed significantly, and the rotometer reading remains approximately the same. The purpose of the second part of the experiment is to observe the effects of the divergent section of a converging diverging nozzle. The layout of a converging-diverging nozzle can be seen here. Like the converging nozzle, the cross-sectional area of a converging-diverging nozzle decreases until the flow is choked at the throat of the nozzle. However, after the throat, the converging-diverging nozzle differs from the converging nozzle. The converging nozzle goes directly to the exit area after the throat, but the cross-sectional area of a converging-diverging nozzle starts increasing slowly until the exit area. Using the formula shown previously, the Mach and pressure ratio were co-plotted to show their variation along the nozzle. This plot represents no flow condition. This is where back pressure is equal to total pressure. This is an example of subsonic flow. The flow never reaches a choked condition. This is an example of choked flow. There's a normal shock in the divergent part of the nozzle, then the flow becomes subsonic. The flow continues to remain in regime two until the end of the experiment. As you can see, as the back pressure has been decreased in the choked condition, the flow rate has remained the same and the Mach values have not changed significantly. To summarize these experiments, the flow through the converging nozzle became choked when the back pressure was about 70 psi. The flow through the converging diverging nozzle was choked around 90 psi. The flows remained in regimes 1 and 2 for both types of nozzles throughout the experiment. This concludes our video for labs 3 and 4. Thanks for watching.